Okay, hey folks, Mark Locklear here. Um, today's screencast is going to be on Chapter 7, How to Define and Use Classes. So, welcome welcome to the big time. We're uh, going to get into uh, true object-oriented programming and classes with this chapter. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is just uh, just write some code and, and just kind of walk you through it and talk you what I'm, what I'm doing um, as I write the code. And, and uh, so I hope this is twofold. Number one, so you can actually see, look at syntax and things like that. But also some of the verbiage, some of the language we're going to use, words like, in, words like instantiating or creating instances of objects. I'll be using those terms. And so hopefully they'll, that'll be all this process of, of you kind of warming up to object-oriented programming. So what I've got here is a, uh, I've created a new pr project in NetBeans and uh, just have the, the main method. In fact, we can see here if I run this, um, yeah, we get a successful build, but obviously no output. So um, we're going to create a class here. Now notice kind of the way I'm going to start working here is I'm not even going to write anything in my main method first. I'm going to write, I'm going to define and, uh, or define our class, define some instance variables and maybe some methods in our class, but we'll build our class up first and then we'll come back to the main method in our in our application and then maybe call some instance methods uh, or some instance variables or methods from that class. So we'll uh, we'll get a sense for how that works. Okay. So uh, just for starters, we'll go to whatever our default package here is and right click on that and we'll do new Java class. And then in this case, uh, we're going to create a class called AB Tech. And then we can should be able to take all the, the defaults here and just hit finish. And notice we get a, a just kind of a blank AB Tech class. Um, our package is going to be referenced up top here. And then the syntax is just uh, public. In this case, this is a, a public class, the keyword class, and then the name of the class, and then open and close brackets. And we see again, nothing has changed in our main method. In fact, if we go back and run, uh, compile and run the main method again, nothing's going to happen. Um, so what are classes and what are objects? So one of the things object-oriented programming allows us to do is, is it, one of the goals of it is to allow us to describe objects that sort of mimic what's out in in the real world. Um, when you look at historically procedural pro programming was somewhat arcane and maybe didn't you didn't give you a good way to describe objects in the real world and so one of the goals with just software development and programming in general is to do it in, su in such a way that it sort of makes logical sense, right? And so that's one of the goals of object-oriented pro programming is it allows you to create these classes that are going to so sort of mimic uh, real-world objects and mimic how things work in the real world. And I think part of the idea there is that if we can make our software, if we can make, if we can write our software to look like uh, what's out in the real world, then it's going to be easier for us to understand and also for other people, you know, especially when you get into these larger enterprise type applications that are thousands or maybe millions of l l lines of code. Uh, again, the more it can sort of look like uh, what the real world is and from a logical standpoint, uh, objects and classes can look like what those objects in the real world are, then it's going to make more sense to us and it's going to be easier to maintain. So we're going to create a, cla uh, a class called AB Tech, and so we think of it in terms of okay, if this represents AB Tech, just think about Asheville Buncom Technical Community College as an entity. You know, it's a community college, it's it, it's a school. So what are some attributes that might represent um, a uh, might represent AB Tech? So when we start to think about those attributes, then we start to think about variables that might represent different parts of AB Tech. So one of those things might be, and I'm going to just, uh, I'll just ha I'll kind of type out this first and then I'll, I'll paste some code in, but one might be the, the year the school was started, right? So I'm going to do public static. In this case, we're going to call these finals, which means they're constants. So I'm going to say year started equals, and then I'm going to say 1895, okay? So year started is just a, it, it, it's an attribute of AB Tech, okay? That's really all it is. So what I've got here is, again, this is going to be a public variable, so it's going to be publicly, publicly accessible outside 
of this class. That will make more sense in a few minutes when we do some things from the main method. Final just means that it can't be changed. So even if we had like a, a setter for this method, we couldn't go in and change it. It can only be changed, you know, here just actually in, in, inside, the, 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 the inside the code or inside the, this class. And then I'll just notice, also notice we did all uppercase for year started. It, that, that's more of a convention than it is you, you have to do it. We could make it lowercase if we wanted to, but in this case it's uh, uppercase. And then 1895 is simply the year. And then also the int. Notice we have to specify the type. I, you know, I haven't talked about that much, but when we talk about, uh, you, you, might, you may hear as you move forward in your uh, in your journey with software development, you hear about uh, uh, strongly typed languages, and Java is strongly typed. And we, when we say strongly typed, we don't mean like typing on the keyboard. We mean that uh, the types of variables, when variables, all variables have to be defined as a given type in uh, Java. Now there's some what we call loosely typed language. So Ruby is a loosely typed language. We can just create a, va a variable in Ruby. Ruby and there's some uh, some interpretation that goes on at the um, sort of at the, the language level that it may interpret as a string if it's letters it may interpret it as an int or a double based on if, if there's a number there that it, that, that it can read so if you if you come across uh, you know the, the terms strongly typed or loosely typed languages that's what we're talking about so before I paste in I'm gonna I'm gonna paste in a few other variables here for a second just take and think about what what might some other variables that would be associated with a b tech be so again and we're talking about attributes here so what 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 might some other attributes be that would be associated with a b tech i'll just give you a a few seconds to think about that okay so now i'm going to paste a few in here so let's see what we've got here. So we've got things like school name. That would that probably that might have more logically went uh, before the year it was started. But school name, school URL, school a address, slogan, full time, tuition, and notice these are all strings. And then except for notice tuition is a double. So um, so again, just think about this in terms of attributes for the class AB Tech. And I'm going to go in here and sort of clean up. Just as a side note, too, I've, I've commented on a few people's code. But, um, you know, keep your code neat. Um, you notice here I'm going in and lining things up, sort of left justifying things. Uh, you know, your code says something about you, just like any other job you would do, whether it was, you know, your parents asked you to mow a lawn or uh, you were asked to empty the trash cans in, in a place. If you go out and do a sloppy job, mowing the lawn or emptying tra trash cans that sort of says something about your work right well software development is not is is very similar to to that and uh, you know you can uh, you know s s some code that i look at i i, I open up the pro programs and i immediately get a sense of what kind of work i mean functionally a program may work very well but if it's sloppy code it does make it difficult to to read and i think it also says something about uh says something about your your programming too okay so i've got some variables here so now what um so let's move back to our main method now again we haven't done anything in our main method and then if we just run this again it'll build but uh nothing happens but now that we've got this ab tech class here um if i just go here and type ab tech and then dot Notice what happens. I see uh, the instance variables that I just created in this associated class. Um, now, again, remember we made these public just as a side note. If I go back and I make these, um, if I go back and I make one of these, I'm going to say school address, I'm going to make private. Notice that when I come back over here, I don't see school ad address here. So when we talk about private versus public variables, that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. Uh, private variables are only accessible inside this class. So then I could come back here and I could write some code that would uh, access school address, but I'm not able to access that uh, from outside uh, the AB Tech class. But we'll, we'll see that a little later, how we can maybe make some variables private internally uh, but then create methods that would allow us to access them 
externally. And also this kind of points to this idea of sort of control and access to variables or code. And again, when you think, you know, for a lot of what we're doing here, this is very small. We may, we may only have one, two, or three classes in the programs we write. But think about a huge, um, think, think about a huge enterprise application that might have thousands of classes and thousands of different uh, programmers who are accessing that code. This really gives us the ability to control not only um, what access programmers have, but what access other classes have to different code. Okay. Okay, so we've got methods here, and in fact, we could print off. Yeah, we, we haven't seen anything. So if I do a system dot, we'll do a print line system.out.println and then I can call and then inside here I could call abtech dot and then let's see I did full time tuition so I could do something like that and in fact if I print if I run this you can see it's going to print out full time tuition here but now again notice our uh, school address is not going to be accessible to us because it's private and in fact yeah, and in fact, if I tried to type th that in here, um, well, it's just not it's just not going to be available to me because I've set it as private. So that's variables. Let's look at some methods here. Uh, in fact, rather than uh, type these out, I'm just going to paste these in. I'll paste the code in, and then I'll kind of walk you through them, and then we'll call them from the main method and see. So I've got two methods that I've created here. One is called get school banner and another is called get tuition costs. Notice I've made these both public and these by now hopefully you're warming up to these. These should make sense to you. Um, I'll just we'll walk you through a few few things here just so we're clear. Again these are both public uh, these are both public methods. Sort of line that up. Notice that the returns, uh, the get school banner is going to return a string. That's what this, this tells us here. Um, get tuition cost is going to return a double. Notice get school banner does not take any uh, variables. Get tuition cost does. Ta it takes two variables, a Boolean called in state and an int called hours. Now notice this in state and hours when we send when we drop these very variables in they obviously those are the variable names don't need to be called that but it's just uh, this method is going to expect uh, two arguments the first is going to be a boolean the second is going to be an int okay so let's see how and again we've built this up um, we've built this up inside the class and then um, Notice we haven't done anything. So I just I really what I want you to see is kind of the, the separation between a class that's a part of a program and the main method itself. I mean, right now we've got this class here, and we could probably we could I think we could run this, and it just doesn't do anything at all. We're not calling. Just again, those these variables, class variables, and methods are available to us in our main uh, program. And in fact, if I come here and let's type AB Tech now, and if I do dot, notice my variables are available. To, to, to me, but now notice I've got these methods that are available to me. And in fact, I'm going to call get school banner. And let's go back and look at it and make sure we're sure we're, we understand what it's going to do. So notice we've got a simple return statement school name, year started, school address, URL, and slogan. It's just going to print those things out. And in fact, that's a good point. Uh, back to our private. Remember, we made school address private. And so we said that allowed us not to directly call it from the main method but notice we're calling this get school banner that it does have access to it because it's because it's internal to the AB Tech class and in fact if I go ahead and run this application here notice we get uh, the, the AB Tech we get the get school banner method which prints out the name slogan a address URL locally committed so no notice that it did even though our um, even though our school address is private, uh, it still allows us to print it because uh, the get get school banner is a public method. So again, this just I just want you to wrap your brain around this idea that you know private versus public uh, variables and methods. Uh, in in this case, 
the school address variable is private but so that means it can only be accessed inside the AB Tech class so this get school banner method inside the AB Tech class does have access to it and by virtue of this method being public we can call get school banner from our main method and still have access to that variable so get tuition costs is a little more interesting right uh, we're gonna pass some we're gonna pass variables and variables in now and so essentially what this does is gets the tuition costs based on the number of hours and whether they're in-state and you, you notice let's just walk through it um, we take the boolean in-state and we say if notice I've course short I've sort of got this short circuit if statement here uh, notice I don't have an if um, notice I only have the variable in and what this means is if if this variable is true then this if statement will will evaluate to true and I'll run this I'll, I'll take this code path if in state is false then I'll I'll go to, I'll go directly to the else statement and so let's go ahead and run um, let's go ahead and call this method and see what what what, what we get so I'm just going to rather than type it out I'm just going to use that ID to select it and in fact it's kind of handy because it'll automatically put the boolean in the, the true or it all it all, it all automatically put the, the two arguments that that method needs in so I'll just stick with true and let's say I'm going to take 18 hours and now if I print this off notice I get 18 and just for a sanity check if I make this false out-of-state tuition costs is nor normally higher right so we should get a, a, a number that's markedly higher and so we see that here okay so I hope this um, I hope this sort of warms you up to the idea of um, creating a class now let's let's add let's add another step to it another level of complexity and we're going to create a second class and this time we're going to call it student so I'm going to go Java and I'm going to do student and I'm going to say finish so again uh, in this case a single application with a, a single main method but then we've got and we can we can create as many classes as we want inside a, a, a pro program so now we're creating a class called student so just take a second so again let's do the same thing we did with our AB Tech class so a student class what are some attributes that might be associated with a student and I'll just take a second and give give you about 10 seconds to think about that okay so just think about your your status as a student right now what do, what are things that AB Tech uh, needs to know about you okay so in this case we're gonna make these private and so I can do something like first name right that that is that is an attribute of it just in real life that's an attribute of a, a student right and so the same is gonna apply for our program that we're gonna write and now I'm going to paste a couple more in here so then we also do uh, last last name and then also year now year may be kind of years a little bit ambiguous that's probably a, a good uh, example of a, a variable that's not very good right because what does year mean is that the year the student was born is that the year in our case it's going to be the year the student graduates so um, but we're just going to stick with year for for now let's talk about this concept of a constructor so notice how we're doing things a little different in this class uh, in, in this class in the AB Tech class these were all what we call class variables with this student class we're gonna do what's called instance variables and you'll see this in the main method but we're gonna actually instantiate instances of a student rather than what we're doing with the AB Tech class which is just uh, which is just class level methods and variables and you'll see uh, hopefully as we work through this you'll, you'll warm up to that idea so let's look at a I'm gonna just go ahead and paste both of these constructors in here I've actually got two the book talks about a default constructor and that's actually what um, that's actually what we're gonna did this first constructor is a default constructor and so I've got an, I've got a red squiggly line down here right so we'll have to figure out what's going on there uh, but in the meantime uh, th this first constructor notices a default constructor um, 
all I'm doing is just setting an empty string for the first name, empty string for last name, and setting the year to zero. Now, I'll just notice I've also got a second constructor with arguments, and this is a good uh, example of what we call overloaded and overloaded constructor. We can also have overloaded methods too. But what this means is, based on how the constructor is called, a different constructor might be applied. So in this case, if I create a student object and I don't pass any variables to it, then this first constructor is going to be uh, called because notice I didn't pass any arguments to it. I should say arguments rather than variables. If a constructor is called without any arguments, then this first constructor will be called. If a constructor is called with arguments, in this case I'm going to pass first name, last name, and graduation year to it, then it'll set those. Okay, So let's see if we can figure out um, what's going on. I think it seemed like I did this earlier and for whatever reason I could possibly have a missing no, I don't have a, I'm missing one of those. Okay, I'm going to go offline for a second and figure out what, I'm, what I've got going on. Okay, man, my issue was I've got one, I've got a squiggly line, that's, or I've got a curly brace that's missing here. So that's going to sort of straighten that out. So, again, this is this idea of overloaded methods. Or uh, not only overloaded methods, but also overloaded or, or arguments, okay? And then, uh, so now let's go ahead and call this. With what we've got here, we, we've set some uh, instance variables up, and then we've also created two constructors. So let's go over to the main method and play with some code. Now notice um, what we're going to do here is, I'm going to comment this out. Notice uh, how we're going to call, it going to instantiate. Notice, so with the AB Tech class, we just call these methods outright if if uh and just for a sanity check i'm just going to type student and then dot and notice i don't there's nothing available to me here now the reason that is is because i've made all of my variables private here and so that's why those aren't available to me now notice these are public variables but in this case i need to instantiate a student object before i can call these variables. That's because of the, these constructors and the way I've made them. And So let's kind of see how that looks. So here we actually use the the new keyword here. So in fact we do use student which is going to be the class name. In this case I'm just going to say test and I'm going to say equals new is going to be my keyword. Then I'm going to use the class name again. In this case uh, I'm not going to pass any arguments. I'm just going to do this. And I now need to actually print something out. So I'm going to say system.out print line and then I'm going to drop test inside here now what would you expect to see here all right well, let's see so I'm going to run this and notice all I get is this kind of weird look looking construct here in this case I'm just seeing the student object itself and so yeah that's not now notice if I do this if I go to test and I type dot Hmm. Now notice what I get. Well, I get some some stuff, right? Now all of this looks kind kind of odd, but the the reason we're seeing this is uh, this is a class we've 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 instantiated a student object. So test is a student object, but not only is it is it, not only is it a student object, but it's also a a Java uh, object. And so these methods I'm seeing here are all methods that are associated with the fact that it's a Java object. So this is all well and good, but I can't really do much with this, right? It's not, I mean, I can't print anything out. So what we need to do here is create, and let me just go ahead and, I'll go ahead and show you that example too. Let's call the constructor with our arguments and see what we get. So in this case, I could call a new student. So I'm gonna create a new student object, and then we're gonna pass in a first name I'm going to pass in a last name, and then I'm going to pass in a graduation year, and that's going to be an integer, so there's no quotes there. And yes, I graduated in 1990 uh, from, from high school. Uh, so then when I run this, notice I can just get this kind of weird object again. It's not really telling me anything. So what we need to do is create a method that's going to allow us to access the 
data. So now we're going to do what's called a getter. The book talks about setters and getters, and in this case, uh, it's going to be a getter. Normally, it starts the methods start with the first name get. Um, but if I so I paste this here and let's see what we've got. So now I've created again. This is going to be a public method. It's going to return a string. That's what this says. And then get student is going to be the name of it. And notice all I do is say, hey, return first name, last name, and year. And that's the first name, last name, and year. These are these same variables. So notice something very important. Some something very important is going on here. I've exercised based on the way I've written the code in these classes. The only access any class outside of the student class has to uh, any data in this class is through this get student method, right? Because we already proved over here, we proved before that even though we can create a new student object and pass first name, last name, and year to it, we can't print it out or do anything to it. So the idea here is, and part of uh, object-oriented programming at, at its core is, uh, number one, control over data, and also this idea of encapsulation. And we'll probably, I've got a, a video uh, late, later in the summer we'll, we'll, we'll watch where this idea of encapsulation is talked about more. But the idea with encapsulation is that I'm encapsulating data and also methods to access that data. So in this case, the when I were the the object that's being encapsulated is a student object, and a student object data is being encapsulated. Also, methods are so the 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 data that's being encapsulated in this case first name, last name, and year. The methods are, in this case we've only got one is the get student. Um, method. So let's actually see this. Now if you notice if we go to test and we type dot notice we've got this get student method here and in fact if I choose this and I choose run then notice I see Mark Locklear 1990. Um, and then the idea here too is we can create as many of these student objects as we want. So let me I'm just going to copy this code and then paste this in and I can do Calvin is my cousin, and I think he graduated in 1987. So I'll put that in, and then I will. And now, now if I print this out, notice. Let's see what problem we had. Okay, yeah. Notice I named it the same thing, so I'll need to change this to test two. And then if I print this off, I'm on, I'm printing off test. So let's print off test two, and then I can run this. And notice I get Calvin. So that's that's your introduction to classes. What I'm going to do is when I send this screencast out, I will include the uh, pasties to the code for this too. Um, for Chapter 7, part of, there, there's a lot of code there. You'll be doing this Rusty 1 and Rusty 2 applications. Uh, a, a few p people who um, are kind of working ahead already emailed me a few things. Those are going to be separate applications. You've got a single dealership class that you'll be adding methods and adding some code to, but that same dealership class will work with Rusty 1, Rusty 2, and then I think there's a Rusty 3 in there too uh, that I, I may or may not be using the, the dealership class. But each one of those is going to be separate a applications. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, just email me those, and good luck.